Foolish Mortals, to another episode of the Hitchhiking Host Show. We are your hosts, Wes Troop. And I'm Emily Liston. We hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving last week and uh, picked up some great Black Friday deals. I uh, got Disney Infinity uh, for, for me, of course, and uh, and evidently Miss Copycat got hers as well. Chop, I was going to get it before you, but I talked you into it. Yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> yeah. The next I day, I bought Infinity. <laughs> Oh, I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're rubbish at it, so. <laughs> yeah, um, I enjoy it so far for those who have played Disney Infinity. It's pretty fun. I've just done the Monsters University uh, section, and I'm also in the toy box with uh, my Elsa figure, which we'll talk about later. Um, which is really cool, because literally cool, because you get the snow section. Uh, <laughs> it's a cool figure. Uh, why? Why do I know you? <laughs> it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, Emily, what do you think of the game? Um, I really love it. My favorite is uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, yeah, the first day I got it, I spent 12 hours on it. Straight. With the break of, I think I have one toilet break and one 20 minute food break. <laughs> but I was only from like 11 a.m. to like 11 p.m. Fun. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> it, it can get quite expensive. We're going we're gonna to dedicate probably a show to the game itself. Um, but it can get a little expensive if you want every single figure and every single st uh, story pack or whatever they're called. But, you know, the, it, it was on they're sale. They're called so playsets. I... What? They're called playsets. Well, I, whatever it is. Oh. <laughs> I call them storyline packs or whatever. I don't know. But, yeah, anyway, it can get a little expensive if you want every single figure, which is what they want the kids to do. But, eh, you know, it's cool. Oh, I don't know about you, but I've already got six of them, so... <laughs> Including the no. ones that you got with the starter pack? Okay, now I've got three extra ones, and I nearly bought two today. But I'm saving it for Christmas. because I have five, won't... so you have one more than I do. Exactly. <laughs> Alright. Yeah. Already winning. <laughs> okay. So, so far, I have unlocked in the toy box um, the Haunted Mansion, uh, the Up House, um, loads of the characters like Winnie the Pooh set, um, Peter Pan set, um, we just have Tinker Bell on it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. 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 So, um, but I've basically unlocked like some things. And uh, what did you unlock, Wes? I unlocked a door. <laughs> I unlocked Yay! a bunch of shrubs. Um, <laughs> I must be the worst at random wheel spinning. I don't know what it is, but I, I, she emailed me those, or she texted me those pictures, and I text her mine, and she's like, <laughs> I was like, why are you bother taking a picture? Uh, my favorite part was when you told me, um, oh, I unlocked the speed racer. The sp the speed racer car. The Autotopia I was car, like, yeah. I was like, that comes with the toy box. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that was the most exciting thing I unlocked, and then you spoiled that for me too. Jeez. <laughs> anyway, we will we will update everyone on more things we unlock as the weeks go on. For those who cannot wait to hear what we unlock. <laughs> Maybe I'll even update it on the Twitter. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. So on with the show, everyone. Uh, this week, we're, our main topic, um, we're going to do a little bit of a uh, attraction overview on one of our favorite rides, a mutual favorite ride, which is very hard to find between the two of us. Um, and that would be <laughs> the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. I'm coming for you, Tower! The library doors in front of you will be opening. Please stand back from the doors as they will be opening toward you. Thank you.
When stormy night long ago, five people stepped through the door of an elevator and it was a nightmare. <laughs> that door is open once again, and this time it's opening for you. As you come near the Disney's Hollywood Studios Park, the first thing you notice is one of the most popular rides at Walt Disney World, the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. The tower has gone through a number of ideas and changes over the years. The first idea was a collaboration with director Mel Brooks and was to be called Castle Young Frankenstein and later changed to Mel Brooks Hollywood Horror Hotel. The original plan was for the attraction to be a walkthrough murder mystery where clues would be left around the hotel and guests would then receive a certificate for solving the mystery. Through the many different ideas, an elevator finale kept being thrown around. Mel eventually left the project and left the Imagineers to the new plan. They felt it needed some sort of movie or TV series to be based on, so they decided the Twilight Zone. The creators soon started studying the show and pulled ideas together from certain episodes. One of the proposed storylines involved the hotel owner killing his guest, but that was great due to its violence. Another idea was a group of movie stars that mysteriously disappeared on a stormy night before boarding the elevator, with the narration by Vincent Price. The clues that the guests would find would eventually lead them to the elevator, but it would be too late to escape. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put that in there. Michael Eisner felt the guests needed to be a bigger part in the attraction, and the team came up with the idea to have the guests star in their own episode of The Twilight Zone. There were many changes, like figuring out how the elevator could move from one shaft to another. The Imagineers created the world's largest ride system motors to power the tandem vehicles known as AGV, or Autonomous Guided Vehicle, which slots into a larger elevator called a VVC, the Vertical Vehicle Conveyance, without getting too technical about it. Uh, construction soon began and the ride officially opened on July 22, 1994 in the Sunset Boulevard section of the park. When guests enter the Tower of Terror, they make their way around the grounds and into the hotel, which is no doubt one of Disney's most detailed and greatest queues. They are then greeted by the cast members, who are a little bit creepier than the operators of Dumbo. Guests are invited into the library, where Rod Sterling tells of a stormy night back in 1939, where ghosts of the hotel vanished in an elevator. He comments about the elevator still being in working conditions and if they dare to hop aboard. After that, guests are led to the boiler room where they await their ride vehicle. For those wondering, you're sitting down and strapped in. Hollywood, 1939. <laughs> <laughs> 
As the ride ascends, the doors open to a visual of the ghosts of the 1939 disappearance. The doors close and the vehicle rises again, this time into the fifth dimension, where the vehicle moves from one shaft to the other and riders see strange sights and sounds. After this, guests enter the pitch black shaft, where they plunge 130 feet faster than the force of gravity. The ride has a random drop and lift sequence to make each experience different. However, there is always a complete drop through the tower. After the drops, riders return to the basement and make their exit. The attraction can also be found in Disney's California Adventure, Tokyo Disney Sea, and Walt Disney Studios in Paris. Okay, I obviously like all of the ride, but the things that scare me the most is the bit where it's like the white, it's like the 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 lights, and then they go like that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but when you enter the elevator. For the, yeah, yeah, that bit terrifies me. I don't know why. It's just something about it because I know it's coming. I think. Yeah. And um, recently, <laughs> once you, once once the ride ends, have you ever you know when it ends and then you're in that room, yeah. and then the cart turns around and then the door's open and you get out. I've never looked around that room because there's a um a doll in there, like a a puppet thing, kind of like Pinocchio, but like terrifying kind of like jigsaw no i haven't seen that. Time, I have to, I'll have to check that out yeah no it, it's on the left and it's just there and every time we must have to like poo ourselves especially my sister because it's just staring at you i will make sure i take a picture of that next time and send it to you every night <laughs> Oh my god, no. Yeah, I mentioned in previous episodes about how um, when I was nine, the first time I went to Florida, and my cousin told me it was um, a simulator-ish kind of ride, like um, Antarctica. And um, I love the Antarctica ride in SeaWorld, and, um, when I was nine. And um, he told me that, yeah, it's kind of like that, and you kind of go in, and then um, you, you, you kind of... <laughs> He said that you don't, like, obviously you float, but he kind of made it sound like you're kind of like Peter Pan, sort of thing. And so I was like, oh my god, we have to go on this dad. And my dad was like, are you sure? And I was like, yes. And then, and then we queued and everything, and then the ride dropped, and I thought it was broken. And so I've been terrified of lifts ever since I was nine. Yeah. So Wes, what things do you like about it? I, I, I literally love everything about it. Um, the ride itself is awesome. Uh, I have a funny story because I've been on the one in California Adventure and the part we were talking about about how it moves into the fifth dimension they do yeah. not have that part in California Adventure so oh. I was just I literally was waiting I'm like oh I, you know well, it, you have to go through this and that because I know the, the, the ride in Florida and I'm like and then all of a sudden they're like in the Tower of Terror I'm like wait what and then all of a sudden <laughs> and I was I screamed like a woman and uh, it was great <laughs> because I really I was literally waiting to go through the fifth dimension and they don't do that in the California one so surprise on me <laughs> and I was trying to be cool about it but it didn't it didn't happen but um that's yeah. terrifying but that, that and the weird part is that's one of my, the, the best parts of the ride I don't know why that's not in there but um so. Um. So, so I, I love the whole ride itself. I love the the freaky ghost when the door opens and the, it's raining, it's pouring, and all that stuff. I I love the details in the line. Even if you don't want to go on the ride, it's like you should be able to just walk through the line and just check out the library and then leave. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if they would let you do that or not, but it would be worth it. Maybe they would. I don't know, but uh, and definitely check out the gift shop at least. But um. Yeah, yeah, it's it's one of the coolest buildings in Disney World and and whatever park it's in, no matter what park it's in, it's one of the coolest buildings. And we we're sp speaking of the library. I have a funny story. Uh, la my last trip, well, two, both times I was on it last trip. The first time I went, I was on, I went on by myself and used a fast pass, and I was the only person in the library with the creepy lady. That run that was in there with me, and I was like watching the movie, and I'm like making sure she didn't like put any moves on me. But, <laughs> but I, I was like sort of like looking out of the corner of my eye, like where she was gonna move to. I'm like, where are you going, lady? Where are you going? Yeah, the light she's gonna come, and she's gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she was actually a ghost, but um, so that was yeah. funny. That, that was pretty cool. She was like this way. I'm like, yeah, I know. Um, but, uh, <laughs> I'm I'm my ass, but uh, that, that was a different story. Um, <laughs> 
the, the, the last time I was on the ride, I went with my friends, uh, my with my friend Jeff Heimbuck and his stepson Alex. Um, we were in the we, we were in there, and there's a phone sitting on the on the um, like a table in the library, and there's a button on it, and we were and we were and we were saying to Alex, push the button, push the button, Alex, go ahead, do it, and. Nothing really happens. And as soon as he went to push it and he had his finger on it, the lights went off. <laughs> and, the, and the movie started, and it was just perfect timing, and we were just cracking up hysterical. Last time when I went on it, there was this um, guy that we, we basically got in it, and he put his seatbelt on. Like, we all put our seatbelt on. And she's like, the woman was basically like, can everyone check their seatbelts and everything? And then the guy at the back in the middle. I had like a hen guy who was like, okay, I can't do this, I want to get off. And she was like, you want to get off? And he was like, yeah, I'm getting off. And she was like, oh, okay, can you just pull open your um, safety harness then? He was like, yeah, it won't come open. She was like, that's because it's too late. And then she just left. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, no, 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 please. And he was panicking the whole time. It was so funny. Wow. I felt so bad for the guy because he thought he was going to get off. And then it, <laughs> she was like, it's too late. There's no good luck. <laughs> Well, that was last week. Yeah, everything about the ride, I love it. It's one of one of the best rides in Disney. Yeah, if you're not afraid of heights, definitely make sure you do it. I, I would, I would also suggest not, like, your glasses. Kind of hold on to them because I've heard st- <laughs> my my dad has told me that his glasses were almost in the fifth dimension. So, <laughs> um, and if you oh, are afraid of heights like me, you should still do it anyway. Well. Okay. It's uh, fine. Wait, oh, I have to say one of my favorite parts though is when you when you see the whole entire park. Yes. Uh, the, door, the doors are open and you come up and you see everything out. You see the yeah. sorcerer hat. You see you know everything in the Hollywood Studios park. And that's one of the coolest things in, of the ride. So the movie of Tower of Terror, um, is really good. Uh, me and my sister love watching it. It's really good. Um, it's really good. Like, well, it's based on the ride, just like the Haunted Mansion. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's really good. It's kind of scary. It's obviously for kids, so it's not too scary. But it's got, definitely got some scary moments, like um, when the little girl is singing, it's raining, it's pouring. It's kind of creepy. It scares me. <laughs> um, but it's got a good like twist to the story. I suppose kind of like um, the Maleficent film that's coming out. It's kind of like the villain side, the movie of the Tower of Terror. I won't give too much away, but basically it kind of like twists it all around and it's a really, really good ride. It tells you like how and why it got struck by lightning and things like that, how they entered the fifth dimension, etc, etc. So it's a really good movie. You should watch it. You should check it out. I should because I've never seen it before. As we mentioned before about the gift shop, definitely check out the gift shop because there's some of the coolest items in Disney World in there, and especially if you have Tower of Terror fans. Just like this bell right here. And in addition to the bell right there, he's also got a bell from the merchandise shop. <laughs> okay, some news of this week is um, the Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. Uh, the Imagineers did some overnight additions, mostly scenic elements. I guess we'll see this as they approach the first lift of the ride. And sitting on the crane are the two vultures that appeared in the Snow White Scary Adventures attraction. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I, I think so too. Um, it's, a, it's as cool as Elsa. But uh, yes. Uh... <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it's as cool as the... Uh, as cold as my feelings towards you right now. <laughs> I, I, I like that they recycle parts of different attractions. Um, I think it's neat. I'm Obviously, it's good that they didn't get rid of it too soon. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see some more uh, things that were found in Snow White's Scary Adventures uh, making a home in the new Mine Train ride, which is more than welcome. Magic Kingdom's entrance is now turnstile free, making it the final touch point entry system. All of the parts are now turnstile free. So guests can just have to scan their car basically, or, or their annual pass, or their magic band to enter the park. Um, Typhoon Lagoon was the first to go turnstile free back in February, and the other parks debuted there uh, throughout the year. Um, I've been, and it is really cool. You just, it's like a gold, like um, 
hold. kind of ball with Mickey Mouse on it. And you just basically hold your card or your wristband up and then it makes like a magical twinkling noise and it has a green light that goes round and then, yeah, there's, there's literally nothing stopping you from just running on in there. <laughs> I was gonna say, do they have a real buff security guard standing right there? Like, hey, don't even think about it. No, <laughs> no, they just have the... <laughs> like in, um, Lilo and Stitch. I was just gonna say, yeah, like the security guard from Lilo and Stitch. <laughs> it's yeah. also good because it makes more room for people that are in wheelchairs and that have strollers, and everyone's not crammed and like, oh, right, here comes a wheelchair, and they knock you right over. <laughs> and also for large groups of like, you know, yeah. when, when the Brazilian tour groups come in and you see those blue shirts, and uh, <laughs> nah, <laughs> it, it's nice to keep large groups together, long story yeah. short. Yeah, but well, when I went with my sister um, and my, my mom and dad, basically you can just kind of stand with them and watch each other do it. Like we were taking pictures of each other, like scanning our cards, like there's no kind of go through the barriers and go sort of thing, or go through the barriers and wait, you just can kind of stand around because there's like Loads of room either side of you, so right. it is good. It's fun. Moving over to Epcot, Holidays Around the World has returned. A very neat thing that they do there every year, uh, where you can see holiday traditions from around the world, obviously. <clears throat> All Around World Showcase, they have each country has a special thing where they show their holiday tradition. Um, the American Adventure has a Santa and Mrs. Claus meet and greet, which I guess is not as uh, more special than the malls, evidently, around here. Uh, Père Noël is in France, their version of Santa. Uh, La Bifana is a kind of witch in Italy. I guess that's their special tradition. Uh, I assume she's a good witch, not a bad witch. Wizard of Oz reference, thank you. Um, the Monkey King in China. Uh, yeah, I, uh, interesting. He looks kind of like a ninja. But, um, he looks awesome. I, I wish I had the Monkey King. <laughs> and uh, customs from other countries, of course, as well. Um, like England, woo! <laughs> yes, and what, 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 you, what do you guys have? Father Christmas over there? You yeah, call Father him? Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We also call him Santa sometimes, Santa Claus, but mainly Father Christmas. And I, I'm sure they'll have, uh, in the UK pavilion, I'm sure they'll have Christmas Beatles stuff and Christmas Doctor Who items to sell. <laughs> Yay! My favorite! <laughs> evidently, those are the only things in the UK pavilion anymore. <laughs> yeah. It's basically the only things we the only things we do is, you know, listen to the Beatles, watch, and watch um, Doctor Who, watch it, eat fish and chips, that's all we do, and drink beer. Yeah. Well, you do, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um... <laughs> And also, the Celtic rock band Off Kilter, who I'm a fan of, uh, will have a special holiday show in the Canada Pavilion. Uh, and of course, there will be the traditional candlelight processional, which is uh, hosted by a celebrity for uh, different nights. Neil Patrick Harris has done it already, and my great uncle was down there for that, and I was totally jealous because I missed Neil Patrick Harris. But uh, whatevs, yevs. And also, speaking of Epcot, Norsk Kultur, hopefully I'm saying that right, a Frozen-inspired gallery showcasing artifacts and objects that inspired the film opened in the Norway Pavilion for a limited time. We, uh, so I've seen pictures and it looks pretty cool. Um, the Norway Pavilion is really going to be dedicated to Frozen in the next few months. Um, which is very good because it was a very successful film for Disney. And if you haven't seen that yet, be sure to check out my review uh, on my other YouTube channel. It's it's awesome. I'll let, spoiler alert. And also, we told you last week about Anna and Elsa in the Norway Pavilion doing their meet and greets last week. Uh, but you can also find them in Disneyland in the Fantasyland area. Uh, and there's also a... Um, animatronic Olaf on top of the building that talks, which is sweet. Um, uh, definitely awesome. Uh, hopefully they will be there when I make my way to Disneyland next year. Um, Cause I would look, I, I want to meet me some Elsa, but uh, I want to meet me some Elsa. Oh Lord. And also Anna will be aboard to meet on the Disney cruise line ships as well, which is pretty cool. Um, so as the parks go, everything about Disney is going frozen right now, which is awesome. Um, a frozen segment has also been added to the Celebrate the Magic show in the Magic Kingdom. And of course, 
frozen merchandise can be found all throughout the park. So all the parks. I don't. Maybe I think Animal Kingdom has got to have something. Probably the rain, the Sven the reindeer or something. But I'm sure I'm sure they have something there for frozen. Uh, and uh, you know, frozen merchandise is everywhere. I have some obviously the poster <laughs> uh, merchandise like that. These Disney Infinity figures <laughs> that I got, <laughs> and of course. Even even uh, Elsa eats fresh at Subway because, because I got the, oh, no. the frozen uh, the frozen bag from Subway. So you can find frozen merchandise pretty much anywhere right now. But um, when you awesome, check out the movie. When you be scared to be on the cruise ship with uh, Elsa? It's not Elsa. It's Anna. Oh, okay. they did that on purpose. Should I tell you why? Because she would freeze the water. Yeah, Titanic. <laughs> I think Titanic 2, Elsa's last band. And speaking of merchandise, last show we talked about the Horizons limited edition t-shirt at the Disney shop. Well, evidently they realized people got paid again. And uh, <laughs> they, they have another limited edition holiday shirt out this week. Uh, and it kills me because... <sighs> Uh, we'll, we'll explain it later. But anyway, it's a Dreamfinder and Figment holiday t-shirt. And God, I love Dreamfinder and Figment, a journey into imagination. But I just don't see spending the money to wear it once or twice a year in December. Because if I have this shirt on in July, I'm going to look like an idiot. For those who are interested, uh, Dreamfinder is in a Santa outfit. And Figment is in some sort of holiday getup. And there's Christmas lights on it that say Epcot. It's a really, it's a cool shirt, but I don't know. I don't wear holiday shirts that often, so I'm probably gonna pass on that, unfortunately. Uh, you can get it from December 4th to the 8th on DisneyParks.com/store, uh, and of course it's 24.95 plus shipping. And finally, this week back in 1994, the Timekeeper made its debut at the Metropolis Science Center in Tomorrowland. We'll talk about the Timekeeper a little bit, but that definitely deserves its own uh, episode. To talk about, uh, I love the Timekeeper. I miss it. Um, I remember going I on at well. least two or three times a vacation when it was when it was open. Um, it's it's very well. It's very missed. <laughs> I like the Monsters uh, Inc. show that's there now, but I still miss the Timekeeper. Yeah, I miss it as well. Hopefully, since you said you said 1994, hopefully next year we'll get a 20th anniversary of the Timekeeper T-shirt. Ha ha! There you go, Disney. You can give me money for that idea. Oh, I'm sure they will. You know, they oh, watch right, you the know. show every You, know, you know the CEO of Disney watches the show, right? Are you being sarcastic? Well, that does it for another episode. Uh, Emily, you want to tell everybody where they can find you on the interwebs? Uh, yeah, you can follow me on Twitter. Um, it's at EL5AME. Or you can follow, uh, go onto my merchandise website. It's basically uh, greeting cards, invitation, pictures, things like that on www.floatingturtle.co.uk Yes, follow her on Twitter and get into a feud with her like Safari Mike did. Safari Mike, you know we love you. Anyway, uh, yeah. for me, youtube.com slash westside of 515 for all my movie reviews. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, at Wes A-List. And um, we have our Hitch Hitchhiking Hosts Twitter, Twitter, at Hitch Host Show. And on Facebook, you can like us, facebook.com slash hitchhostshow. Everything's hitchhostshow, basically. Anyway, uh, so until next time, don't forget to... Hurry back. Hurry back. For the next episode. See you next week.